Hello, thank you for tuning in to Deeper Studies. I'm Melanie Bitmo. And I'm Mark McComas. And I'm Michelle Patton. And we want to thank you again for tuning into the program. Today we have a very important message, and we pray that everyone please listens and takes heed um, to the things we're going to bring forth in the Bible. Um, if you look at the church world today, it seems like a lot of um, discord, a lot of deception, and a lot of false teachings has come into church and so-called almost taken over. Um, the true spirit of God seems like it's not even in many churches. And we want to tell you those signs to look for um, about false prophets and things spoken on the platform that may not be true. And it's important that we follow after the word, follow after wholesome teaching. Wholesome is something that is healing to you and your spirit and your body. And the word of God, um, it's important that you base your beliefs off the entire Bible and not after, after a doctrine or a teachings and theories of men and philosophies. Um, if you looked in Galatians, it tells us um, Paul speaks on being aware of vain philosophers and, and it says to shun them. And we just want to tell you um, that it's very important, again, that we take heed into the Bible because Satan has crept into churches today. And I believe that he's trying his best to lead as many people away as possible. So it's important that, again, we take heed into the Bible and follow after it and continue in it. And over in, did you want to go to Matthew now and tell them about um, what it says in the latter days? And this is Jesus, a parable of Jesus, right, actually speaking. And he, he tells you about what's going to happen in the last days. Um, yeah, uh, Matthew chapter 13 is a very good chapter. It shows you how the devil is very deceiving, and even with the word of God and the seeds that you would try to sow. And um, I'll use Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 through 32, and it says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Now this is a parable of the kingdom of heaven, and you have to look at the church word now today. It's become big. It's, it's grown very much. And he's telling us that these fowls, these fowls represent, you know, these, these birds, these fowls, they represent demonic powers. And so you have to realize that the church has grown way big. You got, let's say what it is, you got your TVNs, you got your radios, you're going to have all these people out here teaching, you got all these people out here preaching, and they say they're anointed, they say they're of God, but here it's telling us that the church is going to be big and that there's going to be demonic powers lodged in it. Amen. Um, one example that we would like to share with you, you know, as we're talking about the church world and what's going on in the church world, is one topic that I hear personally, a lot of things coming from the platform is prosperity and money. Um, we know that according to our Bible, it talks we know that we have to have money to a certain extent. You know, we have to pay our bills. But there are some people that are on the platform and they base their doctrine and their beliefs off of money. And I feel like that is, that is totally opposite of what our Bible teaches. I believe that God will take care of his people. I believe that God will provide for his people. But for you to get on the platform and make a doctrine out of it and make the Bible off of it, and make your congregation to believe this is the way you live and this is the way you are going to be, I don't, uh, I don't agree with that. So over in James, um, is that where we want to go with this one? Michelle, you want to read it? In James chapter 2, verse 1, he says, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. Okay. And it says, For If there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring, and good of goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say to him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, God hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom? which he hath promised to them that love him, but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? 
But if ye be fu fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as a transgressors. Okay. So this, some people could say this can go in a couple ways, okay? Sometimes as Christians, we want to, somebody, some people may walk in the door and they may seem like they're dressed as, I don't want to say homeless people, but in less um, goodly apparel. And so you may show them less attention as would you would somebody else that walks in with the suit and looks like very proper. So you could take that in that sense. But at the same time, I believe it can go in another sense of some people or pastors on the platform, they got this money and, and they're lifted up by their congregation and they're, they're followed by so many people. And they, they believe that, oh, this is truly a man of God. He has his own jet or he has his own big old ring or he has this outward appearance that makes him seem so high and mighty. And they end up being a respecter of people and following after him opposed to maybe a pastor that it maybe only has 10 people in his congregation and that's preaching the word of God. So I believe it's important that we don't lift these pastors up that are preaching prosperity and that are preaching money. It's important that we do not support these types of ministries because at the end of the day, I believe we're going to be held accountable for what we stand for. Amen. I just want to bring out the point in verse 7. It says, do not do not they blaspheme that worthy name mm -hmm. by which ye are called. So these rich men, every, if you notice it, what they preach, mm -hmm. all these get, get rich preachers, they, every one of them blasphemed the name of God mm -hmm. and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And um, as we heard um, Creflo Dollar talk about how he, um, he said that Jesus um, didn't, um, is not God because he, um, God doesn't need to be anointed. Mm -hmm. You know, man needs to be anointed and he's not God. And they blaspheme the name of Jesus. They blaspheme God. They, they blaspheme do. his holy name. Even yep. Copeland um, <laughs> goes out and says that Jesus is the biggest failure. Yep. And, and just blaspheme in the name of God. Yep. And saying all these foolish and um, evil, devil, devilish doctrines. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just actually sad. Uh -huh. Very sad. Yep. And people fall for it. And then you saw um, Creflo Dollar throwing money. Or, or they had the money on the altar, mm -hmm. and uh, they had all this money on this altar, and they was up there walking on and saying, oh, we're going to anoint this money, and we're going to anoint it, and you're going to be blessed and prosperous, and all these people start throwing their money on the altar, mm -hmm. and they blaspheme the name of God. Yep, um, and that's true, and I think Mark witnessed that himself. I didn't see it, but... You, yeah, know. you, can, you can YouTube the video and just type in, Cleflo dollar walking on money and you see it for your own self. Amen. So there's another example that I, and there's some people that say, well, Jesus was rich. Yeah. Creflo dollar said that actually I heard him say, he, well, Jesus was rich because he had a treasurer. Okay. And uh, excuse me. No, it says that in Matthew two, um, or in Luke two, that Mary had to, um, offer up pigeons mm -hmm the offer up and that was the poor person's offering because they couldn't afford a lamb amen and another example that i would like to give you about jesus is in matthew 21 verse 18 and it says now in the morning and this is talk about jesus as he returned into the city he hungered okay and i looked at that word hungered and it said we we like to use the strongest concordance and it's a non-biased dictionary and it basically gives you the, the meaning of the word. And the word hungered, the number for it is 3983. And then it says um, to, to famish, hunger, be hungry. It said also to toil for daily substance. And that means to work or labor, to maintain or support oneself at a minimum level. So Jesus, you know, he worked in a way of, of providing for his daily needs, not being this rich person, living in a mansion, having the, the gold cups and vessels that they drunk out of. No, Jesus, he was a humble person. It said in, his, in the word, I believe it's in Ephesians, how he thought it no reputation to be equal unto God, but thought it not robbery to be equal unto God. Philippians. Mm -hmm. Philippians, I'm sorry. But he took on him as a man, the form of a man, being, you know, even in the humbleness of death, We'll read it exactly verbatim, word for word. I don't like ad-libbing sometimes. It's uh, Philippians chapter 2. Mm -hmm. 
Um, he says in verse 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant mm. and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, nowhere in here do I see that Jesus was rich and he had great fame and reputation. Mm -mm. <laughs> it said the opposite. It said the opposite. <laughs> so we're just trying to give you, you know, biblical examples of how, you know, our Bible and Jesus is not based off of riches. It's not based off of money. I believe that the richness of Jesus comes in another form, rich in wisdom, rich in glory, rich in power, rich in might, having great things in, in, in heaven. Those are our riches, not things on here of this earth that fadeth away and passeth away. It talked about that also of the moth-eaten stuff. This stuff is going to rotten. This stuff is going to burn. There's going to come a trying where God's going to come down and he's going to send fire and everything's going to be tried with fire. And everything that can be shaken will be shaken that it may be removed. Amen. Okay? Amen. So if you're not standing upon the word of God and you're not built upon the word of God, let me tell you one thing. Your money's going to fail. Okay? God won't fail. His, he has a financial system that never fails, okay? So if you're in Jesus, you're in God, and the Holy Spirit's in you, you got it made, but you have to stay there and make that your dwelling place. Money will fail. Man's going to fail. Riches of this world are going to fail. Man's knowledge is going to fail. Man's theory and philosophies are going to fail. But only thing that is going to abide forever is God and his word. Jesus is the word. His word abideth forever. So that's the only thing that's going to stay and remain is his word, his eternal spirit. And if you have his eternal spirit in you, then you're going to remain forever too. So Amen. where do we go from here? Well, as we're talking about riches, if, if you read in Proverbs 23, verses 4 and 5, it says, Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. What thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle towards heaven. So right here, the word is God is telling us not to labor, to be rich. Mm -hmm. So these pastors, these people I heard us preaching prosperity and, and saying, oh, we call them the money gods because they're, they're pre preaching out here. They're even trying to take advantage of the church war. They're trying to make us look bad. Us real ministers and flames of fire, mm. they're trying to put a bad label on us and a name on us. Yep. So there's many people out here that, and even in James 3, 1, he tells us, there be not many masters, for they receive the greater condemnation. So my thought is, why do you see so many people out here teaching these things about money mm -hmm. and, and portraying this image when James is telling us in, in James 3, 1, my brethren, be not many masters. If there's not many masters teachers out here, why do we see them all up in here? Are these demonic powers? Are these false teachers that lodged in the church at the end times? I believe so. Um, I just want to give two scriptures real quick on mm -hmm. um, how the scriptures warns uh, against the rich people. Mm -hmm. And one is in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. It says, But they that will be rich will fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And it goes on to say in verse um, 5, or verse 6, Verse 5 and 6, it says, Perverse disputings of men and corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that great gain, that gain is godliness. He says, From with such withdraw thyself. And it says, Those that suppose to, um, that gain is godliness, he said, Withdraw thyself from. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a church that is um, teaching that gain is godliness, you need to withdraw yourself and Amen. find a church that's preaching the truth. Mm -hmm. And he says that in verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. And then you go on in James chapter 5, he also tells the rich. Um, he goes and says, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold is silver and cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped up treasure together for your last days. But behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields 
which is now of which is of you kept back by fraud crieth and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Seboeth. Ye have lived in pleasure on earth and have been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of the slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. So we are not making this up. We're not twisting the scriptures around. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't get this. Um, it speaks plainly about the rich. Mm-hmm. And you can't get it twisted. I mean, it's very plain. And Amen. this is the scriptures that we're reading from. Amen. It's important. You know, you may hear somebody that, you know, these so-called preachers, they may so-called give a scripture, but it's good to, I believe it's in Isaiah that talks about, let every word be established in the mouth of twos and threes. And it's important that you back scripture precept upon precept and line upon line because, um, just not take one scripture and run with it, you know, like, like we did here, and, and praise God for his sweet Holy Spirit, and praise God for his anointing, and, and through the word and through the scriptures, it does reveal the truth, and back it up from precept to precept, and even if you look in Leviticus, um, they talked about the sacrifices being made, and for poor people, that is said to take the pigeons and turtle doves, and how you find out even from the beginning until the end, the Bible changeth not, you know, Jesus came to fulfill all these, the, the whole scripture it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. So you see even from the beginning of the Bible, even until the end of the Bible, from Leviticus over into, where was it? You was talking about in Luke chapter two, was it? About the, how Mary offered the, the pigeons. Right. And that backs it up even with Leviticus, how that confirms it. You know, even with the poor had taken those sacrifices and again it's important to be able to back your scriptures up and not just take one and run with it so one more scripture that talks about um the rich over in luke 6 24 it says woe unto you that are rich and that's a that's that woe is something that's like you better take heed in other words woe is something that's that's like a strong fierceness um that could do you guys understand what i'm trying to say mm-hmm. that woe whoa be careful it's kind of like the same woes in revelations when he talks about um, the seals that that are open and Mm -hmm. the judgments are coming upon the people and the last woes yes he says woe unto them Uh uh-huh so it like you said the a type of judgment be careful because i believe the the rich and those that trust in their riches will have some kind of judgment brought upon them and what if people say you know you guys are mentioning this people creflo dollar um what was the other one um the money preachers copeland kenneth copeland Kenneth copeland what if people say the bible says touch not mine anointed we i think that we've given many examples of god's um true anointing and money and riches is not god's true anointing amen they're not anointed by god they're anointed by the devil to preach demonic teachings Mm -hmm. and we're judging the with the teachings amen. and not the men amen because out of the heart the mouth speaketh and amen. and that's how we judge those things by peop by peop what people say mm-hmm. and we are supposed to judge what people say and their amen. teachings and mm-hmm. their doctrines amen. and does it line up with the word of god are they preaching the truth are they preaching scripture no you cannot sit up here and listen to doctrines of devils amen because amen. then you will be judged for listening to that uh-huh. as in um Jeremiah mm-hmm. chapter 14, uh-huh. verse fif- 15 uh-huh. and 16. You want to read that? Sure. It says, Then said the Lord unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. So it's talking about what's going to happen to the prophesiers and also the people that sit under 
that type of prophecy. Amen. Amen. They listen Amen. to them. And so God's going to judge them, mm -hmm. the prophets and them that hear them and listen to them. Mm -hmm. And he's going to judge them. And he's in the way he was going to judge them by famine and by sword. And none is going to bury them. Mm -hmm. And God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Uh -huh. And if he did one thing in the scripture, he's going to do it again today. Mm hmm and well, that people say, well, that's Old Testament. I'm sorry, but God uses the Old Testament for our examples Amen. to show us his judgments. And yes, we are under grace. But if you reject the grace of God and you reject the truth, then how much more is God going to pour out?